In this video, we'll take a look at how to create dynamic word bubbles for your cartoons or comic books using Photoshop CC. So I have a composition I've created here. It has a lot of different layers. If you look over here in the layers panel, you can see I have this page, which is basically the whole cartoon. And if I toggle that open, there are some subgroups. There's a group for the bubbles, which I'll show you in a minute. There's a group for the panels which are the borders that cover everything here. And there's the art, which is merged down. Now, when I created this artwork, it was originally in a lot of layers, and it looked something like this. I started out with a very rough sketch to conceptualize my artwork. I then drew some lines for panels. I turned down the opacity of my rough sketch, and I went over it on new layers for my ink. And then I added layers for color, and all of those color layers are separated. Sometimes I separate them by color, sometimes I separate them by object. That way if I wanted to change the whole color of the jacket, I could do it very quickly. And then I have some backgrounds that I added in. Those are separated onto their own layers. So I worked from foreground to background. I can hide the rough sketch, and we have our basic cartoon here. Now if we jump back over here, we'll add some word bubbles. So I've created a group for word bubbles. Look at our first word bubble. This is the basic word bubble. And you can see it is a live vector shape with live effects applied to it. So for instance, if I want to control the stroke and make it thicker, I can make it thicker. If I want to change the text, I can go in and change the text like so. So this is what I mean by these being dynamic is that you can change these without them losing resolution. Now, this is a shape, so if I want to edit this shape and make it bigger or smaller, I can do that. Because it's a vector, it can scale up. If I want to change the point here and have it point somewhere else, I'll select the shape first, and then I'll use the white arrow tool or the direct selection tool to drag a box over this end point, and you'll see that I can move this dot now. If I drag that dot towards the mouth, I can reposition it, I can drag one of these other two points to make the line thinner. I could also hold shift to select multiple dots and I could move the position of the end of this all together if I wanted to. If I wanted to put it on an opposite end, I could put it over here, grab this dot here, and move it in a different direction. So these are all very editable. And of course, you could save these out and then just copy and paste them or duplicate them into new compositions. So once you've built these word bubbles, you won't really have to keep rebuilding them unless you need custom word bubbles. But I'll show you how to make a few different kinds. For instance, here's another style of word bubble where it has a curved point. And again, this is dynamic. So if I want to go to the shape here and use the white arrow tool to select this point, I can move the point, I can move the curve, I can get any kind of shape I want. So let's take a look at how to go ahead and make one of these bubbles. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just collapse some of these groups. I'm going to go to the top of the group here so that I'm creating things in a very specific place. And then I want to go to the shape tool here. Now, if you tap and you hold, there's a rectangle, there's a rounded rectangle, which is what I'm using mostly here. There's an ellipse tool, which you can use for ovals, and there's other shapes. But you'll probably be using the rounded rectangle the most, probably the ellipse as well. I'm going to get the rounded rectangle because I prefer that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I have a fill that's set to white. And I want to make sure that the stroke is set to none. Because we're going to add a stroke a different way. We want to make sure that this is set to shape. And then if we click here, we want to make sure that we do combine shapes. So I'm going to drag out my word bubble. Don't worry about getting it perfectly sized. Just go ahead and draw it out here and build the bubble first, and then you can go ahead and size it however you want. So we have our bubble. We're going to make the point for the bubble using the pen tool, which is right here. You want to make sure that this is set to shape. Fill is white. Stroke is no stroke. And then you want to go to this option here and set it to combine shapes. This is important because you want your triangle to combine with your rounded rectangle. You don't want them to be two separate objects. You want them to be a single layer, not two separate layers. So if I go ahead and click three points 
and you want to just tap. You don't want to tap and drag. You want to do quick points. One, two, three, and then hover over the third point and tap to close it. You have your triangle. Now what you should have is this single layer here which contains a shape for your triangle and it contains a shape for your rounded rectangle. If you have two layers, that means you didn't do it right and you have to go back. You have to make sure that you're combining shapes, not creating a new layer. The reason why is because when we go to stroke this later, we're going to want the whole thing to stroke together and we want to keep this editable. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the path selection tool. The path selection tool lets you tap on shapes and move them around. So even though these are independent shapes, they're still on the same layer and this is how I can move them independently. So if I want to move this up here, move this over here, I can. If I want to move the individual nodes that are on that path, I'll use the direct selection tool. So for instance, if I want to move the endpoint, I have to use the white arrow. So now that we have our bubble, we can do some different things to it. We can, of course, move it around if we use the move tool. And if we use free transform, control T, you can rotate it if you like, you can flip it, you can scale it larger or smaller, and it's always going to be nice and sharp because it's still a vector shape. 